So, brothers and sisters, we're going to go ahead and get into this Sabbath lesson. And the title of the lesson is, The Lord Will Prove You. And it's more of a, almost a warning, caution-like lesson, brothers and sisters, because everybody in here, whether you a newcomer or you've been here for a while, you may tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going to serve you. Lord, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to be your servant. Lord, I'm a Christian. Lord, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Lord, I keep your commandments. The Lord ain't going to just take your word for it. Right? I want you to know that. He's going to test you. He's going to see what you're talking about. The book says, just to jump ahead of myself, look at the Lord is going to try to it off of your heart, brothers and sisters. And he really is going to see if your walk matches what you're talking about. Hey, if we, are, if we had a God that just went on what we said, everybody would be in the kingdom. Everybody. Lord, I'm your servant, your faithful servant. He to the king. But it don't work that way, brothers and sisters. And I want us to understand that about our God today. Whatever you say to your God that you are, he going to see. He's going to really see if you're doing what you say you're doing. And that's what we're going to look at today, brothers and sisters. The Lord will prove you. First thing we got to understand, let's go to James, the first chapter. We're going to start this in James, the first chapter. Before we get into this lesson, we're going to do a disclaimer out there first, brother. So we're going to James, chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. And I hope y'all got room in your bellies. Can you still read? Praise God. So we're going to James, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. James, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13, because I want us to look at something first before we look at God proving us. Proving us. James 1, and pick it up at verse 13 when you get there, Brother Jordan. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Uh -huh. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. See, so one thing we got to understand before we get into this, because I hear people say, well, man, if the Lord wouldn't have did this, or well, if the Lord wouldn't have did that, that would have never happened. God don't operate like that, brother. So Satan is the temple, not Jesus. Lord ain't gonna put nothing evil in front of you. You can't say the Lord made you do nothing. In fact, if you keep on reading that voice, that keep on reading that they say every man is drawn away of his own lust and entice. Anything that there anybody has wanted to do wrong is because they wanted to do it. Not because the Lord put something in their face. Keep reading, brother. 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and entice. Uh-huh. So when you are tempted, it's because there is something going on in you that you wanted to do. Matter of fact, you really can't even say the devil made you do it because you wanted to do it. So I want to throw this disclaimer out there first, brother. So we're going to read some things about the Lord. And I don't want nobody to think the Lord put you in an evil situation. The Lord just proved his point about you. Amen. There's a reason why I'm saying that. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. We're going to Jeremiah chapter 17, brothers and sisters, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9 when we get there. Jeremiah 17, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. You know, everybody got their friend or their loved one. If you know so well, you can almost tell you tell them what they're gonna do before they do it. Mm -hmm. Everybody got that one child, everybody got that one brother, that one sister. Did you know them so well you know how they're gonna operate? That's how God is with us. And the things he say about us is hey, our maker know us, brothers and sisters. Right. Man, brother, brother made a comment before we even started the class today. He said it's amazing us. That we act just like our forefathers did way back then. Mm. That's true. Like we just came down the road 10 years later with new clothes on. <laughs> but we act just like our forefathers, brothers and sisters. Let's look at something. Jeremiah chapter 17, we're going to pick it up at verse 9. What did you read, my brother? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? Who knows how bad our minds really are? But there is somebody that know it, brothers and sisters, the most high. Keep reading, because he's going to say something about himself. You're going to see what the Lord do to each and every one of us with this next verse right here. What it read, my brother? How the Lord searched the heart. Uh-huh. I tried the reins 
even to give every man according to his ways. He say some men. Oh, every man. Just the Israelite. Every man. Just the Gentile. Every man. Every man. So nobody is exempt from this. Go ahead. According to his ways uh -huh. and according to the fruit of his doing. But you hear what the Lord said he does? He tries it. That's the saying we say when somebody, oh, you trying me. <laughs> Another word they say is testing. <laughs> hey, when you when cars are being built, when new technology is being built, don't y'all know it's tried and tested first? It's got to go through some things to see if it works. What make you exempt from that? You were made, but you can't be tested. I don't think so, brothers and sisters. The Lord just told you, I'm going to try you. And he ain't even talking about a physical thing. He's talking about a mental thing, brothers and sisters. He said, I'm going to try to reign for y'all. Your deepest, darkest thoughts, the Lord going to see what you're working with. You know what? That boy always like thinking about money. Let me see what happened when I put him in this situation. You know, that sister's always thinking about materialistic things. Let me see what's going to happen when I put her in this situation. Let me see where her heart at, because they say they serve me. They say they love me. Let me see. I see loved ones do that. Well, baby, if you love me, you would do this. That's a try. <laughs> Well, honey, if you love me, you'll cook that. That's a test. And you think your God ain't going to do that for you? You are sadly mistaken, brother. So, we finished that, brother Joy? Yes, sir. Let's look at an example of this, brother. So let's go to Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter. Now, I made a statement earlier. I said, hey, if it was all about lip service, all everybody would be in the kingdom. Nobody would perish. So we all say what we need to say just to get in there. But there's something that happened way back with our forefathers that we need to look at. And then the Lord is going to prove this point. Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, we're going to pick it up at verse 26. Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 26. And we're about to eat, brothers and sisters. That's why I said, I hope there's some warm in your belly. Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, and verse 26. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and feed me. For who is there of all flesh? They have heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and live. Uh -huh, this is what our forefathers are talking right here. No one has seen the Lord like we have and see him. They got scared when they saw the mountain ablaze. When they saw hey, Moses go into the darkness. Oh no, Israel was, was spooked of that. They were spooked of the situation, brothers and sisters. Here's why I say that, because the Lord is going to verify. Keep reading, my brother. Those thou near. And hear, and hear all that the Lord our God shall say. Uh -huh. And speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee. Go ahead. And we will hear it. Hey, so what did they tell Moses? Hey, we don't want to see this situation no more. What if you go to the Lord and whatever he say that we need to do, we going to do. Boy, we do that to this day. Yeah. Whatever our teachers show us, whatever they have, praise the Lord. We're going to do that. Thank you for the lesson, brother. I got to work on that. We got to do that. People say that. Check out the Lord's response to what they said. Keep reading, bro. And do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your word. Uh -huh. He spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people. Uh -huh. What did he hear? He heard their words. Go ahead, my brother. Which they have spoken unto thee. Uh -huh. They have well said all that they have spoken. So what did the Lord say? Oh, they spoke well. Sounds good. You know, anybody, anybody with children, you know that child you have, well, mom and daddy, I cleaned up my room, I did this, I did that. You're like, oh, okay, sound good. And you go to the room and the room is a wreck. <laughs> I thought we cleaned your room. Well, I did. I put my toys in the corner, but the room's still there. But you sound good. You sound convincing. Our forefathers sound convincing. The Lord even validated it. Oh, they spoke well. But what's that next verse say? 29. Oh, that there was such an heart in them uh -huh. that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Do you see what the Lord said about our forefathers right here, brothers? Oh, if there was such a heart in them to do well, to serve me. Which means what they said ain't going to match their actions. Now, their actions haven't even happened yet. But he know. Thank you, my brother. He know. Just like the parent that know their child. All right, so, well, 
You know what your child's gonna do. You know your child's gonna cut up. He sounds good. But yeah, we're gonna see. Lord said, oh, but he said, oh, if it was such a hard in them. Now, the Lord just didn't make an insult about his people. He knew his people. And he proved them in situations just based on what we said and just what we're going to read today. But one thing we got to learn from this, brothers and sisters, lip service do not work. Lip service do not work. Let's go to Isaiah 59. I'm sorry, Isaiah 29. Very familiar script. But let it scare you. And like I said, if we could just go before the Lord and just say, hey, Lord, I'm your faithful servant. Let me into the kingdom. We all be saved. But it don't work that way. Isaiah 29, and I want that one verse read, my brother, verse 13. Isaiah 29 and verse 13. What does it read, brother Joy? Well, for the Lord said. Who said? The Lord. Just making sure. Go ahead. For as much as his people draw near me, with their mouth uh -huh. and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. The Lord said the closest thing you have to him is your mouth, your lip service. When it comes to your heart, your mind, the Lord said it is far from me. That means we saying one thing to God and we doing a totally different one, brothers and sisters. Totally different. You hear people all the time, like I said earlier, they say they blessed and highly favored. When the books say blessed are they to keep the commandments. You're saying one thing, doing something else. And it's been like that with God's people since day one. Since day one, brothers and sisters. But again, we have a proven God. He's not going to say this about us and not prove his point. Let's go to Deuteronomy the 8th chapter. The Lord ain't going to say nothing without proving. Deuteronomy the 8th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Deuteronomy the 8th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. One thing about our forefathers, brothers and sisters, even with the mistakes that they made, they're the best example for you. I would prefer for somebody to mess up before me, so I know what to do when it's my turn. So I'm right. <laughs> I look at all their mistakes, okay, he don't like that. He don't like that. Best not say that. Better not do that. That's what they wrote, brothers. But the book say they are your example. And the Lord was teaching them something. He also teaching us something. Deuteronomy 8 chapter and pick it up at verse 1. What does it read, my brother? All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your father. Go ahead. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Uh -huh. To humble thee and to prove thee. To what, my brothers? To prove to thee. To prove thee. The Lord said he put our forefathers in the wilderness for 40 years to humble us and prove them. Look at the track record of our people. Every time they got in a hard situation in the wilderness, what we do, we murmured and complained. And the Lord, oh, we ain't got no food to eat. The Lord proved, I got you, I give you food. We ain't got no water to drink. Okay, I'll prove you that. I'll give you water to drink. He proved it. You know he do this in life now. Yeah. We be in situations. Oh, I can't get out of this. I don't know how to do this. Lord, pull you up out of it, Mom. You will be in you will be in a life threatening situation, and the Lord will get you up out of it. He don't wish that none perish. He got to prove it to you sometimes. You will give up on yourself, and God will pull you out. Just to prove to you how He feel about you, brothers and sisters. He read, brother. To know what to know what was in thine heart. Uh-huh. Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. So you mean to tell me the whole time when 40 years we were in the wilderness, the Lord was testing our forefathers. Let me see where your head at. Parents do this all the time. Let me see what my child gonna do. Okay, you can go to the party. Okay, you can go with your friends. You do it just to see how they gonna act. Be home at nine. Be home at eight. You had it, it's 805. Don't ask me next week. <laughs> that was your test. You failed. We do that all the time. What makes God no different? <laughs> he said he had them in the wilderness for 40 years to humble them and prove them if they're going to keep the law. And we know the outcome of this, brothers and sisters. Most of them failed this test. 
So you think the Lord ain't going to put you through no hardship to see what you going to do? Ain't nothing new under the sun. Ain't nothing new under the sun. We finished that, brother? Oh, we got verse three. Go ahead. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. He suffered them to hunger. He made them starve. He made their belly ache. Can you know when you're in a hard situation, that's when you really tested to see if you're going to keep this law. Hey, if you had a problem with stealing before you got into the law, and the Lord said, thou shalt not steal, let your pockets go empty. You're going to contemplate what you used to do. That was your test. Hey, if you had a problem with fornication before you came in this place, and you read what you're supposed to do, and then all of a sudden you get alone and isolated, you might be put to a test. Just to see what you're going to do. If you did it with our forefathers, brothers and sisters, don't think you exempt from this. Amen. One thing the book say, the servant ain't above his master. <laughs> so don't think we just going to slide on into the kingdom, skate free, no problems, no nothing. <laughs> you're going to be tested. You're going to be being on and everything else like they do better. <laughs> Lord, going to put you to the lab, brothers and sisters. Well, we finish that, brother. Oh, we still there. Go ahead. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Uh huh. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doeth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord do man live. See, this is a lesson that we're supposed to learn in this, brothers and sisters. The Lord put our forefathers through hardship so we could learn to depend on him only. Only. Everything that he put them through so that we can learn, okay, I got the proof now. God is for me. God can help me in this situation. When I don't have no food, have no way to get food, God is there for me in this situation. When I have no way to get water, God is with me in this situation. He was doing that to teach us something. That's why I say he's a proven God. He's not a God that's letting you live your life and he ain't there for you. He's here for us, brothers and sisters. We just got to learn how to tap into this thing. Let's keep looking at this. Let's look at an example of that matter. Let's go to Exodus chapter 16. Because he said he gives you things to prove us right, Brother George. Let's look at this. Exodus 16, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Like I said, brother, so to learn what not to do from your forefathers. Exodus 16, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, uh -huh. which is between Elam and Sinai, on the, fifth, on the 15th day of the second month, after their departing of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. And but it said the whole congregation. <laughs> <laughs> Whole congregation of Israel. I, I'm going to say it in a way where it makes sense to the new folks. All them black folks <laughs> murmured to two men. They came out of either what, 600,000 strong? <laughs> Imagine that many people coming at you complaining. It's hot. I'm hungry. When we going to eat? What you doing? When we leaving? When we going to get there? Imagine 600,000 of that in your face. Woo! <laughs> the whole congregation did that. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had, di we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of, of Egypt. Uh-huh. When we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to, to the full, for ye have brought us forth into this, into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Look what happened when they got home. Now they talking crazy. Oh, the Lord did set us up. <laughs> he didn't got us in the wilderness to die. When we, we was in Egypt, we had bread to the food. Look how they complain. Look at what they asking for. But again, we have a proven God. Keep reading, my brother. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. For who? For you. For you. Because you think you ain't got nothing to eat. You think you out here to die. So let me prove to you that I'm there for you. Even when you complain and you have your mouth on me, I'm going to still show you that I'm your God. See, these are the lessons that people have lost sight of, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, brother. 
and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day uh -huh. that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. But he gave them instructions even in this. Okay, I'm going to give you your bread, but I'm going to give you a way you're supposed to get it, a way you're supposed to eat it, just to see if you're going to serve me. Keep reading. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. Uh huh. And it shall be twice as much as they as they gather daily. Right. So on the day of preparation, they got to double whatever they bring in and prepare just as more, so they have some for the Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Lord gave them instructions just to see if we were gonna serve. Them. Now keep in mind what we read earlier when we was in that duty Roman. He said, "Oh, if they had a heart to serve me and keep my commandments." So he's doing things to prove his point. Skip down for me, my brother, and read verse 19. And what does it read? And Moses said, let no man leave of it till the morning. So one of the commandments, one of the laws in this, don't leave none in the morning. You get what you're going to get. You, leave, you eat all of it that night. Don't leave it for in the morning. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto Moses. Whatever, Moses. <laughs> That's a simple instruction. And we couldn't even do that. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto Moses. Go ahead, bro. But some of them left left of it until the morning. Uh huh. And they bred worms and stank. And Moses was wroth with them. I bet he was. Can you just command? This is a simple commandment. Get your bread and eat all of it that night. Some of them couldn't even do that. Don't let it roll over till the next morning. So it stank. I know Moses was like, oh. <laughs> you know when somebody just like, man, it's something always with you. <laughs> it was 600,000 or more of that that he had to deal with. Go ahead, brother. That was in the 20th. Go ahead, skip down to verse 26 for me. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Uh-huh. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people. There's always some of us that's got to go against the grain. Always. Hey, don't cross that fence, said the Lord. What if I put my toe over it? <laughs> we them people all the time. <laughs> all the time. These are simple instructions. The commandments are simple instructions, brothers and sisters. But we just got to. Because there's one little toe over that fence. Go ahead, brother. Some of the people on the seventh day were together, and they found none. And they found none, but you was commanded not even to go on the Sabbath day. But they just had to go. And the Lord was doing these situations just to prove his point. Just to show us, man, you don't have the heart to keep my commandments. I'm giving you simple instructions. Eat all the bread that night. You can't do that. Don't gather none on the Sabbath. You can't do that. But he said, oh, if you had a heart to serve me. He didn't just make an insult to his people. He's proving his point. All you did was honor me with your mouth. Go ahead, brother. 28. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my law? And my law. He, good question. <laughs> Who better to ask this question than the Lord? How long are you going to be like this? You say you love me, but you won't keep my commandments. You cry to me, I'm there for you. You still won't keep my commandments. How long is this going to be this cycle? We dealing with this cycle right now, are we not, brothers and sisters? Asking this same question our God asked. How long? How long are we gonna get it? When are we gonna get it? Let's keep going, brother. So let's go back to Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. Back to Deuteronomy eight. We're gonna pick it up at sixteen now. We get amnesia when it comes to the Lord. We'll remember everything but him. <laughs> That's a terrible sickness, brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy chapter 8, we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 16. <laughs> my brother. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, uh -huh. that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee. That he might do what? Prove thee. Because we said we were going to die in the wilderness. Wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. To do the good at thy latter end. Uh-huh. Man, if we would have just paid attention to what he was showing us. If I thought, well, man, the Lord is for us. He got us out of Egypt. 
He parted a whole sea for us. How do you see a whole sea and still not serve your God? You complain about bread, you get it. You complain about meat, you get it. Complain about water, you get it. <laughs> and you still can't serve them? <laughs> it's crazy. But let us not say it. That was me. I wouldn't have did it. We the children of them folks. Yeah, we would. We'd be right there complaining too. Yeah, I remember the leeks and the garlic too, Brother Joy. And I was lifting bricks. Go ahead, my brother. Where we at? Yeah, uh, we just finished 16. Okay, keep going. Get down verse 18. But, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth. I want us to remember that, brother, so because our forefathers did. Any prosperity, any come up, any promotion, anything that you got in your life, you didn't get it. We're going to kill that superstition. You can't say, well, my education got me this because it did. You can't say, my athletics got me this because it did. You can't say, my knowledge of this, none of that. You don't get the credit for it. Sorry to bust your bubble. Your God gets all the credit for your life. Yes. If you got your job, if you got your car, you got your house, you got your family, praise your God. Don't say I nothing. Brothers, we got to kill that. You walk in the house, it's my house. I did just, I did. no, you didn't. The Lord did. He gave you strength. Praise him. Because I hope I lost sight of this. Pick that back up, bro. Verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. As it is this day, and he's still proving his brothers. So that's why we have, a lot of us have the lies. A lot of us came from one situation to a better situation. That was your God proving you. He got our whole father out of a bad situation into a better situation. Got them all the way to their own land. Well, no, he didn't, because they didn't listen. They didn't make it. They kids got their own land. But pay attention to these examples, brothers, and sisters, because there's lessons that we need to learn in this. Our God was for us, and our forefathers did not believe it, no matter how much he proved it. We can't be that. We can't be that, brothers. So let's go to number, number 14. We're going to number 14. We're going to pick it up at verse 2. Numbers 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Numbers 14 and verse 2. When you get there, my brother, he beats. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Again? <laughs> Y'all know who the number one complainer is on this planet? Huh. Your folks. <laughs> Us, brothers and sisters. It's something to learn between this. Do all things. The books say do all things without murmuring and complaining. Because we do too much of that. We do way too much of that. And we see where it got our forefathers. He read, brother. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? There you go. The Lord has set us up. <laughs> well, we talk crazy when we want what we want, don't we? Everybody in here that got hungry, though, we got mad. I call it hangry. You just angry. I'm hungry, bro. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm about to die in here. No, you ain't. <laughs> Why we act like that when we get hungry and we want something? Oh, I'm going to die. Ah, oh, brother Joy, hungry. We're class hungry. Just forget it back there, ain't it? <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. And wherefore had the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword? Why did the Lord do this to kill us? That our wives and our children should be a prey. Uh-huh. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Ooh-wee. It is so bad on you. Did you rather go back to slavery? Because you think God going to kill you. Again, he's a proven God. He had to prove this to them. Skip down to verse 21 and what does it read, my brother? But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Uh-huh. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt. All his proof. His proof. 
No other God has been written that has done what the true and living God has done. Yeah. Nobody. And all the men that said, all that the Lord said we're going to do, Moses, still did not believe the Lord. Keep reading, brother. And in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. What well, stay in, brother? Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But keep in mind why I said this. A lot of the ones the Lord made this statement about is the same ones he said in Deuteronomy, oh, they had a heart to serve me. But they said to God, all that you said we're going to do. And the majority of the ones that said that didn't make it. He proved his point. Point made. Sad point, but point was made. Go ahead, brother. That was the end. That was the end of that. Let's go to Psalm 95. We are dealing with a being, brothers and sisters, that know the end from the beginning. Did the Lord tell you you're going to mess up? You're going to mess up. <laughs> Lord said they saw my miracles and they still teach me. We ain't seen half of what they saw. Psalm 95, we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Psalm 95, we're going to pick it up at verse 8. This is a message for us. Go ahead, my brother. Harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Uh-huh. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Right. He said, the Lord said, they tempted me and they proved me. Are you going to have us die, Lord? No, here's your water. You going to have us die, Lord? No, here's your quails. You going to have us die, Lord? No, here's your manna. And with all that, you still couldn't keep the law. Say it. No faith whatsoever. No faith whatsoever. Go ahead, bro. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation. Once I was grieved with this. Y'all know what that means? You grieved with something before. Oh, when is this going to be? Hmm. That's grief. <laughs> oh, I hate this. It got so bad, brother, sister, when he told Moses to get out the way and he'll make a nation through Moses. I will erase all of them and start over. We made God want to hit the reset button. You know you bad. You know you bad when you made God want to wipe you out. The only nation that can say that. <laughs> Move out the way, Mo. Sick of them. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. And say it. it is a people that do air in their heart. Uh, do air where? In their heart. See, not with their words now. Because they words you right there with the Lord when you're talking to them. Oh, most high heavenly father, God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the creator and maker of everything, I'm your humble servant. But you don't keep the Sabbath. <laughs> don't even make sense. But that's Israel for you. Go ahead, bro. And they have not known my way. Uh huh. But to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my wrath. Ooh. But he said, oh, if they would have kept the commandments, it would have been well with them, did he not? Proved his point. Proved his point. The Lord didn't test them with evil. He proved his point. They don't have a heart to serve me. If I do this for them, they're going to go left field. If I do this for them, they're going to go left field. If I do this for them, they're going to go left field. The Lord said on the last verse, ten times they went through these situations. And every time, we still went left field, brothers and sisters. Something to learn from that. That's why I say, learn what not to do from your forefathers. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse one. And when you get there, my brother, go right ahead. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, uh -huh. and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Gergesites, 
and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Okay, keep reading, my brother. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them, deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, uh -huh. and utterly destroy them. Utterly destroy them, wipe them out. Go ahead. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. So again, the Lord has given his people instructions. When I bring you into the land and I drive these nations out, don't make no league with them people. Utterly destroy them. Go ahead, my brother. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Uh huh. Thy daughter thou shalt thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. Uh huh. For they will turn away thy son from following me. So the Lord even gives you the why. That's why I love our God. He ain't gonna give you no commandment without the why. He said, hey, don't mess with none of these nations. And most of them were Hamite nations, Africans. Baffled me how close we want to be to Africa now. <laughs> when all through the law, the Lord told you, stay away from them folks. <laughs> but the Lord said, they're going to turn your heart from me. You're not going to be close to me if you mingle with these people. So when you get around them, utterly destroy them. Go ahead, brother. That they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you? Because if this situation happens, I'm going to get hot. That's simply what he told them. Don't mess with them because you're going to pick up their God and I'm going to get mad at you. Ain't that parenting? Yeah. Yeah. Don't go over Bubba them house. Bubba them be stealing. If you go over there and he's caught stealing, I'm going to whoop your butt. I don't want you hanging around with Bubba. We go right over there with Bubba ass and get caught. And wonder why we in trouble. <laughs> go ahead, bro. And destroy these suddenly. Uh-huh. Lord, I'm going to get hot and wipe you out suddenly. Now, look, let's look at this, brother. So it was, again, simple instructions, was it not? When you get into your land, don't mess with them folks. Utterly remove them out of the land. Check something out. Let's go to Judges, the third chapter. I'm sorry. I keep going, my brother. I'm sorry. Keep, keep rolling. But thus shall you deal with them. Uh-huh. You shall destroy their altars. Yes, sir. And break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. So remove all their idolatry. Remove their gods. Remove their altars. Don't you mingle with that. Destroy it. Go ahead. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. special to me. Man, we lose sight of that. Even when it comes to the dietary law, I hate for people to say, well, you got to die or something. I'm going to go eat this pork and such, 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 and such. <laughs> it's like the Lord gave you a dietary law because he said, I am holy. I want you to be holy. So, yeah, I got to have a holy diet. People say, I hear people say, well, you must think you better than me because you don't eat swine. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Thank you, sister. Because I'm following the pattern of my God. If you choose not to, then yes. Then yes. Because I, that's who I'm following. I'm not following man. The Lord said, be ye holy for I am holy. Yes, Jesus. You don't eat this. I don't eat this. So for all those that say, well, I got to die or something or what's up, you telling your God you disrespect his diet. That's on you. Where we at, brother? Are we in the middle of six. Go ahead. Pick it back up. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Yes, sir. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Right. So he gave us conditions so we could stand out. We have lost sight of that. Lord, I don't want you eating the bottom thing. I don't want you doing these sins and these transgressions that all these other nations have done that got themselves kicked out of the land. I want you to be different. Again, every parent does this. You see the ruffians in the hood or in the streets or whatever, you tell your child, don't be like them. I don't act like this, so I don't want you acting like that. I don't walk that way, so I don't want you walking that way. You special to me. I don't want you acting like the rest of them. That's all our God was trying to give us. I want you to stand out. I want people to say you better than them. I want people to ask about me when they see you. And that's what we rejected, brothers and sisters. Being on the top. That was the purpose of the law of walking in them. So we could be on the top and stand out. Look how you stand out now keeping the law. People come here, it's just something about you, so I don't know what it is. Because you stand out. 
We peculiar to the world, but we are black folks that serve God. Where do they do that at? And serve them according to the Bible? Man, we show them folks. I didn't know that was in there. I, where, can I see that, Brother Joyce? What is that? That's King James. I got that on the coffee table. <laughs> but we're showing them, brothers and sisters, the pattern of where our God has always wanted from you to stand out and be a people that's so close to God that everybody wants to be a part of. We blew the, We dropped the ball. Simply dropped the ball. We finished that, brother. <clears throat> You said we finished it? Okay, now let's go to Judges, the third chapter. The Lord gave us instructions. Don't mingle with these people. Destroy their office when you get there. I wonder how this played out. Judges, chapter 3. We're going to pick it up with verse 1. Y'all eating okay? Praise the Lord. Judges chapter 3, let's pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go right ahead. Now, these are the nations which the Lord left. <laughs> which he did what? Left. Why he leave them? Why? Go ahead, brother. To prove Israel by them. Uh-huh. Even as many of Israel as had not known all the war. So the Lord made. left some of them. Let me see what you're going to do. I ain't gonna, I'm going to leave a few Canaanites, a few Gergesites, a few Perzites. Skip down for me, my brother, and read verse 3. What does it read? Namely, five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians uh -huh. and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal, Baal Hermon, until the entering into in of Canaan. Why were they there, brother Joy? What does verse 4 read? And they were to prove Israel by them uh -huh. to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord. Ooh, we. The Lord left a little bit of them sprinkled just to see what we was going to do. The commandments already been laid on the table. When you get there, you utterly destroy their altars. You don't have no mingling with them, which is letting you know if you're paying attention to the law, they're going to be there. <laughs> he already let you know they're going to be there. So when they be there, don't mingle with them. And what we do, he read. Which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. Uh-huh. The children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, broke it, Hittites, uh -huh. and Amorites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. Go ahead. And they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to their sons. Again, right back to that Deuteronomy. Oh, if they had a heart to serve me, the Lord would be proving his point. It's a sad point, but he proved it. This makes me think about life sometimes. Everybody in here know the test you passed. Everybody know the test you fail. And don't you know the Lord will put you in a scenario. Let me see what he's going to do. Drop the ball. Let me see what she's going to do. She passed the test. Just to see. We think it's so strange when the Lord told Abraham, take your child, your only child, and sacrifice it. That was a test of his faith. That's the thing that goes on in life every day with each and every one of us. It might not be your child involved, but your faith is being tested. You say you serve God. You say all that he said you're going to do. He going to see. He going to see. Go ahead, brother. And serve their God. Uh-huh. We did exactly what God told us to do. He said they're going to turn your heart. And it happened. Mm -hmm. Now we walk around with dashikis and stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about saying Zulu and stuff now. And you Israel. These things happen, and God called it. God called it, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, my brother. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their God, and served Balaam in the grove. In the grove. Go ahead, verse 8. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. He told you, though. He said, if you do these things, I'm going to wax hot. We did it. So we shouldn't be surprised when the Lord got angry with his people. See, God do this with us. He tells you not to pick up them false gods. He said his name is even jealous. He don't want you dealing with that. So don't be surprised when you secretly got that Christmas tree that you don't got nobody to see and then your life is getting trampled. He hot with you. The world don't preach enough that God get hot. 
God get mad and he do something about it when he do it. <laughs> he don't just walk around, oh, they just make me so angry. Ooh. He ain't gonna do it. He's gonna deal with you. The book said, the Lord said, I will answer you to your face. Lord gonna be right up on you, brother Jordan. <laughs> right up on you. That's what he gonna do. So let's not get him twisted, brother. So he is somebody to be afraid of when you mess up. Not somebody to be taken for granted. Go ahead, brother. And he sold them into the hand of Cush. Look what he did when he got high. He sold his people. Mm -hmm. Not another nation. He did it. Here, you deal with it. Go ahead. King of Mesopotamia and the children of Israel served Cush Risha them eight, eight years. For eight years until they did what we always do. Lord, help me. Lord, please deliver me. One of our big problems, brother, is the Lord is always our last resort instead of our first one. We'll go through and tear our own life up. We'll tear our life up. And then, Lord, help me. When before you made your first step, you should have been asking for that help. Before you made that first move, you should have been seeking your God. Not when all else fails. And that's our problem. That's our problem. Let's go to Daniel, the fourth chapter. The Lord just don't prove that's just with Israel. He said he proved every man, didn't he? He tried every man, did he not, brothers and sisters? Let's go to Daniel, the fourth chapter. When I read that judge for the first time, I was amazed. I said, wait a minute, Lord, you left some of them there? Just to see what we got. You do that? <laughs> It made me reevaluate my whole life. Wait a minute. You really said You did that. <laughs> Believe it or not, brother, so he watches every last one of us. <laughs> he said, You only have our known, so he meant it. <laughs> he meant it. As my grandma used to say, I mean that I meant that. Daniel the fourth chapter, we're gonna pick it up at verse four. We're gonna read about King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel four and verse four. Go ahead and prove some things to him too. Four and four, what did you read, my brother? I Nebuchadnezzar was a rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. Uh-huh. So he said, I was doing good at home. He was flourishing. Go ahead. I saw a dream which made me afraid, uh -huh. and the thoughts upon my bed, and the visions of my head troubled me. So in a nutshell, he had a nightmare. He called it a dream, a dream that scared him. We call them nightmares now. One of them, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Wake up in cold sweat. Oh, praise the Lord, I woke up out of that. I thought that was real. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> Skip down to verse 8, my brother, and what does it read? But at the last Daniel came in before me, uh -huh. whose name was Belshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And before him I told the dream, saying, Uh-huh. So hey, he told he told Daniel this dream. Hey, he even gave Daniel the name of his God. Give him praise to his God, talking about Daniel. You know, he was sent by the holy gods. You know, skip down with the brother read verse 10. Thus were the visions of mine head and my bed. Uh-huh. So now he's gonna tell us what he saw in his dream. Go ahead. I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, mm -hmm. and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Uh-huh. So this tree is referring to himself, brother and sister, but he don't notice at the time. His tree flourished. Hey, his, his branches extended out to heaven. Everything, the animals and everything is dependent on this tree. Hey, it was, it was flourishing, as he said, when, before he went to sleep. He said, I'm in my cloud. It's flourishing. I'm doing good right now. Skip down to 13 and what does it read? I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and the holy one came down from heaven. Uh huh. He cried aloud and said, Thus, do down the tree. Do down the tree. Cut it down. Go ahead. And cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it. And the fowls from his branches. Uh huh. So it got trimmed down the sides, as they say. Remove the branches. Let not the animals be up under it. Scatter his fruit. 
Go ahead, brother. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth. But leave a little bit of them in the, in, the, in the ground. Go ahead. Even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven. Uh huh. And let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Uh huh. So I see why he had to get an interpretator for this dream. Cause I know he was like, I don't know what going on. <laughs> Who's the tree? What's what? What? I bet he gonna go what? <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him. And let seven times pass over him. Uh huh. So let it pass over him seven times. Go ahead, my brother. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Stop right there. This whole dream was so he could learn something. The Lord gave him a dream to let him know I rule in the kingdom of man. I don't care how big you think you are, I run it. That's what this whole dream was about. You that tree, Nebuchadnezzar, and I will cut you down the sides to let you know. Go ahead, brother. And give it to whomsoever he will. And whoever I want to appoint over this is who I appoint. New flag for everybody. Man, why was Obama? The Lord put Obama in office. Lord put Trump in office. <laughs> Lord put Papa Biden in office. <laughs> he put, he said, he set up the bases of men. Do y'all know what bases mean? Lowest. <laughs> so you ain't got to be educated with God. If he want to put you in there and wreck shop, he'll do it. Set who I want up. Go ahead, brother. And set up over in the bases of men. Uh-huh. Now skip down and read verse 27. Now all that was to let him know. Now Daniel's going to tell him something in verse 27. What does it read? Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Uh-huh. Hear what I'm saying, king. Take heed to the message. Go ahead. And break off thy sins by righteousness. Uh-huh. And thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Hey, turn around. Stop doing wrong and do right. Stop doing your iniquity. Yeah, you flourishing right now, but if you, the Lord just told you in your dream, I can cut it off in an instant. Go ahead. If it may be a lengthening of the of thy tranquility. So if you want your kingdom to keep flourishing, turn it around. The Lord will pump his brakes right then, and he would let them know, or something else can happen to you. I cut you down the sides. I have you in the grass. Go ahead, my brother. All this came upon the king of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh huh. All this. Go ahead. How did it play out? At the end of the 12 months, he walked in the place, in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Uh-huh. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of, the, of my power and for thy honor of my majesty? Who did he get a crazy praise to? Himself. Walked around God, man, look at these walls I built. These lights I put in here. Man, look at all this I did. You just as you were just warned, turn turned around. Go ahead, brother. 31. While the word was in the king's mouth, While he was still talking, brother Joe. Go ahead. There fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. You've been told. I told you. <laughs> Go ahead. The kingdom is departed from thee. Uh-huh. Script them right then. While he was giving himself praise, a voice came from heaven. I warned you of that. I even sent my I even sent my servant to tell you what I was telling you in the dream before we got here. Go ahead. And they shall drive thee from men. Uh huh. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. Uh huh. They shall make thee to eat grass and oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee. Just like the dream. God didn't leave nothing out. He proved it to him. Go ahead. Until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. And give it to him whomsoever he will. Go ahead, my brother. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. By the same hour. Hey, anybody ever had them good days and all of a sudden it seemed like everything just happened one after another? Yes. Like, what is going on? <laughs> everything was straight. <laughs> Man, the Lord might be trying to get your attention. It might be something he's been to warn you of or anything. And until he rock you, then you remember, oh, oh my. I should have did this. I should have did that. The Lord told me this. That brother told me to do this. It happens, brothers and sisters. In the book of Job, it said, the Lord said, these things he do often with man. 
often you will have a dream. I don't know what the Lord was trying to tell me that you go out and do something reckless. Then the minute they had, the minute that's what the Lord was trying to tell me right there. You be know, you know it right when it hits you. I know what I did. Go ahead, brother. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. Uh huh. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven. So his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers. Man, turned into a caveman, brother Jordan. Go ahead. And his nails like birds' claws. Uh huh. And at the end of the days, I never could never lifted up mine eyes into heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. Hey, the light bulb went off. Oh, I get it. <laughs> it's like a joke somebody tell you, and you catch it two days later. Oh, I didn't hear what he was trying to say. That boy crazy. You know, what did he know? It's like he looked up. Go ahead. And I bless the Most High, and I praise and honor Him. Yes, so forever. Uh huh. Whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom is from generation to generation. Boy, when Nebuchadnezzar got his proof, he got it. <laughs> it only took him one. <laughs> oh, you in charge? <laughs> Go ahead. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. Uh huh. And he doeth according to his will in the army. Yes, sir. Of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Yes, sir. And see, it's life lessons like that that I praise the Lord for. But this was not for the life lesson. This is what we go through. Man, the Lord have to rock you sometimes just for you to realize I need to humble myself. I need to seek my God. I need to praise my God. I ain't doing enough of that. I ain't doing enough for honoring him. Man, we'll get so wrapped up in self, you'll lose sight of him. But he'll remind you of him. Knock right on your door. <laughs> he'll knock soft, and then all of a sudden you shake your whole house up. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's what we say when we're going through it, ain't it? Oh, Lord. Oh, you talking to me now. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. 36. At the same time, my reason returned unto me. Uh huh. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor, and my brightness returned unto me. Yes, sir. So he would restore it back to his kingdom. Go ahead. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added unto me. Uh huh. So because of understanding it better than the Lord said, excellent majesty was added unto him. It's almost like the Lord took him to a whole nother level because his understanding is where it needs to be now. Those who have a ear, let them hear it. This is what the Lord do. Man, the, man, God is still the best teacher you have. Yes, he is. He will put you through it to make you learn what's going on. That's what he did with Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead, brother. Now, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. Yes, sir. All whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to obey. He is able. Yes, sir. Won't he do it? <laughs> He will. Hey, I don't care how proper you think you is, the Lord will shrink you down to size, brothers and sisters. And he did just that. Gave him a dream, bro, then proved it. We have a proven God. Praise the most high, brothers and sisters. Let's keep going. Let's go to St. John chapter 20. Even after his resurrection from the flesh, Still a proven God. Look at this right here. St. John chapter 20. We're going to see that at verse 19. St. John chapter 20. And we're going to pick it up at verse 19. St. John 20 and 19. When you get there, my brother. Go right ahead. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were the where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, mm -hmm. came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Right. So all the disciples were gathered together, the room was shut, and the Lord just popped in the room. Peace. <laughs> just popped up. I bet that was ooh, that was <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Uh huh. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. So, hey, so when the Lord showed up, he showed them the proof that it was him. 
Look at my hand. Look at my side. They pierced. Go ahead. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me. Even so, even so send I you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins, ye remit. Yes, sir. So they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins, ye retain. They are retained. They are retained. Go ahead. So he was telling them, in a nutshell, go out there and do their job, brother. And so preach the kingdom of God is at hand. Those that turn around from their sins, hey, remit them. Go ahead, my brother. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Uh -huh. Well, Thomas wasn't there that day. Go ahead. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. <laughs> Go ahead, Thomas. Thomas said, No, uh -uh. unless I can physically put my hand there, I ain't believe. He didn't go on what somebody else said. No. Uh -uh. Now, sad thing about it, he didn't believe the word of God. <laughs> but he wasn't going for what the disciples said, but uh-uh, no. Until I can put my hand in his hand, I ain't believe. The guy played out for him, because again, we have a God that will prove you. Go ahead, brother. 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Um, he did it the same way. Go ahead. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Ooh, wait. And reach hither thy hand. Come here, Thomas. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> Go ahead. And thrust it into my side. Uh -huh. And be not faithless, but believe. Be not faithless, but believe. Because Thomas wasn't even going to believe unless he could do that. I see people say, do they put themselves in this situation. Lord, if you get me out of this, I'm going to serve you. Lord, if you can do this for me, I promise to do this for you. I promise to believe. I promise to do this. And the Lord do it for you. Don't be faithless. Be believing. Everybody, a lot of us got this story. I see some smirks in the room. I know I said it. <laughs> Lord, if you can get me up off this road, I promise such, 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 such. The Lord do that just so we can believe him. Is that what it's going to take for you to walk with me? I do it. Is that what it's going to take, Thomas? I do it. Because he's a proven God. He ain't man that he should lie. We lie. We'll say we're going to do something and won't bust a break. But God will be there for you, brother. So, so if that's your story, if you did that for the Lord, if you not that and he didn't came to, because I know he has, remember your promise. Remember your promise. Go ahead, brother. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. He believed now. <laughs> that was all it took. But the Lord did that for him because he said he wasn't going to believe. That's all, that showed you the mercy of God. He could have came to Thomas, old fool, and slow the heart not to believe all that the prophets wrote. But he didn't do that with Thomas. If that's what's going to get you to believe, brother, here you go. Here you go. <laughs> my thigh, my hand. Here you go. Lessons to learn in that, brothers and sisters. Where we at, Brother Joy? Uh, we're just finished 28. Let's go to Acts, the first chapter. 29. Read 29. Jesus 29. said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Because you've seen me, you have believed. Go ahead. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Wonder who he's talking about. Us. Us. Brother, this is a lot of things that our forefathers went through. Like I said, you better use them for the example. We're not going to see a lot of that. We're not in Egypt. We're not going to see locusts coming to America and wipe it out. Frogs coming up out the sink. <laughs> but you better believe that the Lord said that we didn't keep the commandments. He's going to bring you into captivity. Look where we at. <laughs> you better believe when the Lord said you will be the tail only. Look where you at. Because we got to see the proof of it based on our mistakes. Our forefathers had it different. The Lord gave them the land lane with grapes the size of kneecaps. And he broke them off. We got to learn what not to do, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Acts the first chapter. Acts the first chapter. 
And it's a reason why the Lord appeared before his disciples. Even before Thomas was on the scene, he still showed him his hands. It's a reason why he did that. Again, we have a proven God. I know we read stuff now. I, I know I do. It's, and you look at the world, you're like, ooh, the Lord went blind. Ooh, he went, ooh, look at that. He says, so today be like the days of Noah. Look where we at, y'all. It is off the chain out here. <laughs> I'm 42 years old and I hate looking outside. I hate looking at the news. It's like, it's terrible. This world is overrun with wickedness. Yes. In fact, wickedness is the normal now. Yes. There's something wrong with you for being normal now. Yes. <laughs> Crazy. I never thought we would have got here, but the Lord been telling us. Yeah. I ain't I'm like, I ain't gonna be this <laughs> And it ain't got bad yet. <laughs> but Acts 1, brother, so we're gonna pick it up at verse 2. Acts 1 and verse 2. What does it read, my brother? Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles. Whom he had chosen. Uh huh. Go ahead. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. By many what, my brother? Infallible proofs. Many infallible proofs. The Lord popped up in the room with the dough clothes. That was for a reason. Showing his hands, showing his, his side was for a reason. I'm showing the proof of me. Showing the proof of me. Go ahead, brother. Being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. So even after the resurrection, same God still proving his points. He awesome, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Judges, the sixth chapter. Let's look at Gideon. I don't know if y'all ever read this story before, but this brother here, <laughs> he was from Missouri. He was from the show me state. He wasn't gone. I said, boy, the Lord got real mercy. <laughs> Gideon just kept, 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 kept going. We're going to read a little bit of this, brother. So this, this, this is a good one. Judges 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Judges chapter 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Judges 6 and 11. And when you get there, my brother, go right ahead. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an ophir, that pertained unto Joash, the Asbarite, mm -hmm. and his son Gideon, threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. Go ahead. Well, the angel showed up under this oak tree. Go ahead, my brother. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. Uh huh. Appeared unto Gideon. And said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Um, so the angel of the Lord told Gideon something. The Lord is with you. Now Gideon didn't think this was, who am I? Keep reading. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Uh -huh. And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. So even when the angel of the Lord told Gideon that the Lord was with him, he was like, I don't see how. He said, look at everything that has befallen us. Where is the God that delivered our forefathers out of Egypt? Not knowing it was our sins that got us in the situation we was in during this time. But go ahead, my brother. And the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Uh-huh. Have not I sent thee? So the Lord gave Gideon his instructions. I'm using you to deliver Israel from the Midianites. I have sent you. But Gideon wasn't going. He read, my brother. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Uh-huh. So he asked the Lord something right here. I'm sorry, we skipped down to verse 17. Pick that back up, brother, because we ain't letting him know. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. So Gideon said, Hey, if you if I'm really gonna do what you said I'm gonna do, show me. Give me proof. Now, did he say something wrong to God? One thing about it, brother, so the book will tell you try to spirit by spirit. Hey, 
He didn't even just go on even with the angel told him. He needed proof of this. Just like with Moses, the Lord gave him proof of who he was. Doing the same thing with Gideon right now. Keep reading, bro. Depart not hence. I pray thee until I come unto thee uh -huh. and bring forth my present and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. Yes, sir. Skip down and read verse 27. Because he's going to do a test. He want to see if the Lord is really with him. 27, what did it read? Then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city. Hold on, brother. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Keep reading down to 17. I, I told you wrong. I looked at the next verse. 17. Okay. Pick it back. 18. I saw that. 18. Pick it up back up at 19. Okay. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid uh -huh. and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. Go ahead. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Uh-huh. So hey, the angel told him, Pour everything out on this rock. Go ahead. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand uh -huh. and touched the flesh and the eleven cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the eleven cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Uh-huh. What Gideon say, my brother? And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. Uh-huh. So he got his proof then. Oh, okay, I am talking to an angel of the Lord. Oh, Lord, my God. But he had to get his proof. He ain't done. Skip down to verse 36 and what does it read, bro? And Gideon said unto God, if thou will save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. Because he already, he believed now he's talking to God. But he don't believe he's going to win this fight. So if I'm really going to win, I got to test you, God. <laughs> I got to see yeah, we have a proven God. This ain't small for God. This is all you ask him for. Go ahead. Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. Uh-huh. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth, beside, then shall I know that thou will save Israel by my hand. Uh-huh. So he said, look, I'm going to lay a fleece on the ground, Lord. If the fleece be wet and the rest of the ground is dry, I believe. Go ahead. How did it play out, brother? As thou, as thou hast said, and it was so. For he rose up early on the morrow and thrust the fleece together uh -huh. and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Uh -huh. And Gideon said unto God, let not thy anger be hot against me. Right, because the Lord improved it to him. But Gideon still ain't convinced. Well, Lord, don't be mad at it. Show me one more thing. Go ahead. And I will speak but this once. Uh -huh. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it not be dry only upon the fleece and upon all the ground that there be dew. Uh -huh. So let's, can we switch it this time, Lord? And let the fleece be dry and everything else be wet? <laughs> How'd that play out, Brother Jordan? And God did so that night. And God did so that night. Keep in mind what Gideon said. Let me prove thee. I'm like, cool. <laughs> I got you. I will show you me. <laughs> that's how I got operate, brothers and sisters. He ruled in the kingdom of men. Never can I to learn that. Go ahead, bro. For it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. So you would think at this point now, Gideon has enough confidence and enough faith in his God to go. But he didn't. <laughs> Keep reading, brother. We're going to chapter 7 and pick it up at verse 1 now. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them, by the hill of Morab in the valley. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites yes, sir. into their hands. Yes, sir. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. I like how the Lord did that. He said, You know what? It's too many of y'all. Y'all go in and win this fight, you ain't going to give me no credit for it. You're going to say you did. So now we ain't going to do it that way. Keep read, bro. Now therefore, go to, proclaiming the ears of the people, saying, 
whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. Uh huh. And there return of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remain ten thousand. Uh huh. So he asked the question: If you're afraid, you want to go home, go home. And twenty-two thousand left. Now they down to just ten thousand men, right? That ain't enough convincing. Go ahead, my brother. Verse four. Get down. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Gideon, "The people are yet too many. They still too many, Gideon." Go ahead. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. Uh huh. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, it shall go with thee. The same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee. The same shall not go. The same shall not go. And look, and what did he tell Gideon? Take them to the water so I can try them. And I'm gonna let you know who gonna go and who ain't. Skip down to verse seven, my brother. And what does it read? And the Lord said unto Gideon. By the 300 men that left, will I save you? Uh -huh. The Lord put them on the test. He said, everybody to get down on their knees and grab the water, he got to go home. But everybody put their head down like a dog, he can stay. Now, I don't know if you, if you have any military background, military is the other way around. They want you to keep your eyes on the situation. They want you looking and being alert. If you down looking like a dog, we can't use you because you ain't paying attention. But God didn't want the ones that were paying attention. He wanted the ones that weren't even thinking about. Them the 300 I want right there. Go ahead, brother. And deliver the Midianites into thy hand. Uh-huh. And let all the other people go, every man unto his place. Let everybody else go. Let everybody else go except for those that lap like a dog. Skip down to verse 9, my brother, and what is it read? And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host. For I have delivered it into thine hand. So at night, the Lord told Gideon, it's time. Get up. You done won the battle. He already told him I have delivered them into thy hand. Which means you have won before you got there. But again, we have a proven God. And he knew he was dealing with a cat that had already. Well, Lord, you sure? Well, do this. All right, now. Now do this. All right, now. One more time, do this. He already dealing with it, and he know that. What the next verse say, brother? But if thou fear to go down. But if you still don't believe me, if you still afraid, go ahead. Go thou with fear of uh -huh. thy servant down to the host. Yes, sir. And thou shalt hear what they say. Uh-huh. And afterwards shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with fear of his servant unto, unto the outside of the armed men uh -huh. and the host. Uh -huh. So the Lord said, if you're still afraid, go down to prayer and listen to what they say. And when you hear what they say, then you're going to be convinced. The Lord knew it. And he proved it, brothers and sisters. Skip down for me, brother. Read verse 30. Uh, keep going. Keep going. We just finished 11. Uh-huh. 12. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. Uh huh. And their camels were without number, as the sand by the seaside for multitude. Yes, sir. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow. Uh huh. And said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian. Uh huh. And came into a tent. And smote it that it fell. So Gideon heard a man dream. So I had a dream of a little cake rolled down there and told the whole house up. A little cake. Go ahead. And smote it that it fell. Uh huh. And overturned it that the tent lay alone. Uh huh. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the word of Gideon, the son of Joy. So keep in mind, the Lord told him when you go down there, you're going to hear a conversation. And when you hear this, you're going to be ready. This is what he heard. Brother was talking about his dream. I had a dream a little cake went down there and told that house up. And here comes his partner. I'm like, there ain't nobody with Gideon now. <laughs> he heard this. Go ahead, brother. A man of Israel, for into his hand have God delivered Midian and all the hosts. So he heard them say, man, the Lord is with Gideon. That's Gideon you had a dream about. The Lord is with. Oh, he hiding now. Because the Lord said, you're going to be ready after you hear this. Keep in mind, we're dealing with a proven God. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, yes, sir. that he worshipped and returned to the host of Israel. He worshipped God. And it said he returned where? To the host of Israel. That means he got his mind back on his God, brothers and sisters. He wasn't afraid no more. 
He convinced now. See, God do that. He will convince you to be his servant. Oh, he for real. Everybody had that moment. Oh, he for real. <laughs> Go ahead. And said, arise, for the Lord have delivered into your hand the host of men. And he even told Israel, arise. Hey, he, we, we won. He know it now. Go ahead, brother. That was the end of that. Was the end of that. Hey, message to be learned in that, brothers and sisters. And look how many times the Lord proved this to Gideon. Over and over and over. This is our life. We still need convincing sometimes, do we not? And he still give it to you. He still give it to you. Still give it to you. That's why, brothers, as long as we live in there, is hope. Let's go to 1 Peter, the first chapter. I admire those type of conversations some of our forefathers had with God. It's real. <laughs> because we be convincing sometimes. We don't always believe. We don't. We say we do. I heard a centurion tell the Lord in the book, I believe but help my unbelief. Which means I got shadows of doubt still in there. I need you to kill for me. He'll do it. The Lord don't wish to know in Paris. So whatever he needs to do to get you on ball, and get you to serve him, he don't do it. Believe that, brothers and sisters. He don't wish to none perish. First Peter, the first chapter, we're going to pick it up at verse 6. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 6. All right, brother, Jordan, keep feeding this, my brother. Wherein he greatly rejoiced, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Uh huh. He said, "Greatly rejoice that you are in manifold temptations." How are you gonna rejoice? You're going through hard stuff, hard life, but it's a reason for it. Keep read that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Uh huh. Though it be tried with fire. Though it may be tried with what? Try with fire. Try with fire. Do y'all know how they test precious metals? They test it with fire. They get that big old hammer and they hit it. It goes through rough conditions. That's you. That is each and every one of you to say you walking in this. You got to go through this fire. Keep in mind a servant is not above his master. Go ahead, my brother. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. So just like they go when they test it. And they finally put it through the fire and they come out, they got this nice, pretty brick. And it's precious to them. Look at everything that it went through. Look where I got it at now. That's you. Brother, so we are going through a test. And if we pass this test, we are precious in the sight of the Lord. It said those who endure to the end, does it not? The most word that we lose sight of ain't in is in. Do that means you got to go through something to get somewhere. You ain't exempt from that, brothers and sisters. God gonna see what you're talking about. We finished that, brother Jordan. Yes, sir. Let's go to James, the first chapter. I'm right over the book of James, chapter one. We're gonna read verse one, verse, verse 12. Imagine, well, we probably could have still been in the land. Some of our forefathers would have passed their test. Even their generation that made it to the land, they wouldn't have messed with them other nations. They would have kept their heart where they were supposed to be. We'd still be there. I ain't been in my own house yet. <laughs> Don't even know how I feel. <laughs> and a lot of us can relate. Show hands of people that been to Jerusalem. Yeah. Thought so. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't here. <laughs> Want to go, but I'll wait. Right, right, right. I'll wait. Yeah. Lord, get it right for me first. Yeah. <laughs> I can walk in on my part of land like Caleb. That's mine right there. 
James chapter 1, what verse 12 read, my brother? Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Go ahead. For when he is tried. When he what, brother Jordan? When he is tried. Go ahead. He shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord have promised to them that love him. Uh-huh. This all this life is, brothers and sisters. It was nothing strange that the Lord did with Abraham. It wasn't nothing strange Joseph went through. It wasn't nothing strange Job went through. That's life. Every last one of us is going to be tried. The thing about it is, the book tells you with faith, the Lord don't put nothing on you you can't bear. So you're dealing with a God that already knows you have the ability to pass the test. You just make the choice to fail sometimes. Because he already knows what you can do. You just make the choice to fail. Let's keep going. Let's go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Because believe it or not, and this is one of the biggest mysteries that have overslipped this world now, it all revolves around the word of God. Life in general revolves around the word of God. Who going to keep it? Who ain't? That's life in general. Hebrews 11, we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Hebrews 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. When you get there, my brother, go right here. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. He said Abraham did this when? When he was tried. When he was tried. Now here's why I say it all revolves around the word of God, brothers and sisters. Skip down for me, my brother, and read verse 19. And what does it read? Accounting that God was able to raise him up, uh huh, even from the dead. Go ahead. From whence also he received him in a figure. That was Abraham's faith, believe it or not. He knew that he was dealing with the God of resurrection, brothers and sisters, the one that could raise you up from the dead. He couldn't just say that. God had to prove that. Take thou son, thou only son. If you know that, because we all know, we all say we know this. What if that test comes to you? Because all that was tested from Abraham was his faith in the word of God. I know that I'm dealing with the true and living God, the, the one that raises us up from the dead. You do? Then you take your son and kill him. That's all it was, brothers and sisters. All revolved around the word of God. We know not to steal, not to commit adultery, to keep the Sabbath holy, to not bear false witness. Don't think the Lord ain't going to make sure you know it. Because you say you do. It's nothing strange. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's go to Psalm 105. Psalm 105, we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Psalm 105, we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Psalm 105, verse 16, I want us to look at something about Joseph. When you get there, my brother, go right ahead. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. Mm -hmm. This was during Joseph's time. You know, during this time, the whole land of Canada went through a famine. The only people that had any food stored up was in Egypt, where Joseph was running things. Go ahead, brother. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Uh-huh, but before all that, Joseph was sold in the servant. In fact, his brother sold him. Go ahead, brother. Whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Uh-huh. Until the time that his word came. The time that his word came, for his release. Go ahead. The word of the Lord tried him. It said the word of the Lord tried him. Now, when did the word of the Lord try Joseph? We finna look at an example there. Hold your marker right. Matter of fact, we're gonna just stop it right there. Let's look at something, brothers. Look at this. It said the word of God tried him, right? Let's look at something. Let's go to Genesis chapter 39. Really want us to see what life is and understand what go on between us and the Lord. Genesis 39, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We're going to read a little bit about Joseph and why it said in that psalm that the word of God tried him. 
Genesis 39, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 39, verse 1. When you get there, my brother, keep feeding. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, uh -huh. which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. Yes, sir. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Uh-huh. So when he was in his house, and he was in his master's house, he was a prosperous man in his master's house. Lord was with him. Go ahead, my brother. Skip down to verse 7, and what does it read? And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. So he doing good in his master's house. Matter of fact, he said that there wasn't nothing that Joseph didn't have control over in his master's house but her. And that's the one that came to him. Lie with me. What did it say, brothers? But he refused. But he refused. Pay attention to this, brothers and sisters. There is a strong message in this. But he refused. Go ahead. And said unto his master's wife, Behold. My master, what if not what is with me in the house? Uh huh. And he has committed all that he had to my hand. Uh huh. There is none greater in this house than I. Now pay attention to what Joseph said. He said, You know, I'm in control of everything in this house. Matter of fact, there ain't nothing I can't put my hands on. The average person will say, You too. <laughs> <laughs> but pay attention to what he said in the next verse. Go ahead, bro. Neither had he kept back anything from me. Uh -huh, so right? ain't none kept back from me. Go ahead. Because thou art his wife. Uh-huh. How then can I do this great wickedness? How then can I do this great what? Wickedness. Go ahead. And sin against God. And do what? Sin against what God. What is sin, y'all? Transgression, Transgression of the law, law, right? So you mean to tell me he knew do not commit adultery right here? Mm -hmm. See, he had a situation. He could have slept with her. But he was tried by the word of God. Thou shalt not commit it to I can't do that. That's life, y'all. Amen. That is life. What Joseph went through was life. You be put in situations where it's either you're going to serve God or you ain't. You might have access to whatever. But you're in a situation where you're going to serve God or you ain't. That's why he brought God into the picture. He didn't even say his master right here. He said, I can't, he could have said, I can't do that to my master. He brought God in the picture. Try by the word of God. We got to look at life like this. You got to go through life, even when it get bad for you, and you got to remember the word of God. You might say, well, shoot, if I go steal something, I can get, I can pay this bill. I can pay this car note. I can do that. But God said, thou shalt not steal. See, you're going to go through this, brothers and sisters. God is checking to see what you're going to do in these situations. Because what did he say? You're going to be tried by fire. He was in a rough situation. He already a slave, but he a prosperous. And a woman come to him, lie with me. Like I say, most brothers fail this test. Where are you? <laughs> well, don't say nothing, baby. <laughs> and they do what they're going to do. But he brought God in it because he knew what he was dealing with. Why should I do this sin against my God? See, when you always realize who's watching you, you act different. It's just like that child is always looking at mom and daddy. Make sure my mom and daddy watching me. Let me sit down. <laughs> you better be that. You better be that. We finished that, Brother Jordan? Yes, sir. All right, let's keep going, brothers and sisters. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. First Corinthians chapter three. We're gonna pick it up at verse thirteen. Don't think the word of God ain't trying you, brothers and sisters. First Corinthians, the third chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 13. When you get there, my brother, go ahead. How you doing, brother? Hold on. I'm going to give y'all time to get caught up. We have 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter. 
I don't want nobody getting left behind. The title of the lesson we're doing is The Lord Will Prove You. We have 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. I'm going to pick it up at verse 13. 1 Corinthians 3 and 13. Go ahead, my brother. Every man's work shall be made manifest. Uh huh. For the day shall declare it. Go ahead. Because it shall be revealed by fire. You know what that means? Every man, every man, how you say you are, is going to be revealed. Because the day going to clear it. One day, people are going to see what you're talking about. People say they serve the Lord all day long. But then they go through life and be like, that brother wasn't serving the Lord. That sister wasn't for real. Because the day going to declare it. You're going to go through something that's going to really prove if you is or you ain't. Go ahead, brother. And the fire shall try every man's work. The fire shall try some men. Every man. Every man's work. Go ahead. Of what sort it is. To see what it is or it ain't. What did the Lord tell our forefathers? He said, I'm going to prove them to see what's in their heart. Because he got to. And how did he do that? By suffering them to hunger. Not starving them to death. Suffering them to hunger. I got to put a little bit of pain on you just to see really where you at with me. Look what the Lord came and did for us, brothers and sisters. He died for us. He got his butt whooped for us. And you mean to tell me you can't go through your little bitty stuff and serve God? He ain't opened his tongue, y'all. We cussing everything else when we going through. <laughs> he said nothing. It's a lot for us to learn in this because, again, the servant ain't above his master. So you go go through it just to see if you real with what you say you're doing when you're in here. Test ain't in here when you walk out that door. Go ahead, brother. If any man's work abide which he have built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. He shall receive a reward. Look how Joseph's outcome was. At the end of all that, even after that story, he was put back in prison. Served some more time, got out, and took over Egypt. Why? Because his work remained. He stayed the course. If I'm in jail, I'm serving God. If I'm working for this man and I'm over all his stuff, I'm serving God. If I get back in jail, I'm serving God. If I run Egypt, I'm still serving God. Because we change up some time in life situations. We want to serve God when we're going through hell. But when everything's good, Jesus who? I did this. Pay attention, brothers and sisters. We finished that, brother? Uh, yes, sir. All right, let's go to Psalm 66 now. Back to the book of Psalms. There's a reason why the Lord tells us to meditate on his word day and night. Because we'll forget and get used to self. We so used to we so used to self, it don't make no sense. <laughs> That's God's biggest enemy is your own brain. Because you will talk yourself out of serving the Lord. I got it. I can do it. When the last time you been in your book, brother? I don't need to be in the book. Everything's good right now. I've heard this. Psalm 66, we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Psalm 66, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. You read that then? Yes, sir. <laughs> 66 and 10, what does it read, my brother? For thou, O God, has proved us. Has done what? Proved us. He testing you. Go ahead. Thou hast tried us, as silver is tried. Uh-huh. Thou broughtest us into the net. Thou layest affliction upon us. Look what he's telling you he gonna do to try you. He's telling, I'm gonna lay some affliction on you. I'm gonna put you through this. I'm gonna put you through that just to see if you really with me. You saw what the son did and ain't none of you went through what he went through. Passed his test. <laughs> Look at what some, some of the disciples did. Paul said, I fought the good fight of faith. He said, I got a crown of righteousness laid up for me. That's somebody who know I passed every test you put in front of me. We still walking this earth saying, hey, bro, Joy, you going to be in the kingdom? I don't know. Why we don't know? They knew. Because they knew whatever God put in front of them, a bound or a face, whether they were afflicted, tormented, shipwrecked, or whatever, I'm serving God. 
Have we made our minds up yet? Okay, we need to, brothers and sisters. We need to. Go ahead, brother. Verse 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Thou hast caused men to ride over. Man, you see people come up and you steal down just to see what you're going to do. I've seen this. Go ahead. We went through fire uh -huh. and through water. Yes, sir. But thou brought us out into a wealthy place. Uh-huh. We didn't went through this. Man, we didn't lost houses. We didn't lost jobs. We didn't have to relocate. We've almost been almost poor. All this. The Lord put us through all this, brothers and sisters, just to see where we at. Go ahead. Verse 16. Skip down to 16. Thank you, brother. Come in here. All ye that fear God. Yes, sir. And I will declare what he has done for my soul. And you know why I want that read? Brother, you read that earlier when we opened up. Because every last one of y'all, including us up here, got a story. Like I said, you know your test. You passed. You know the ones you failed. You know the situation that God put you through what made you question your faith. And that was all God testing and proving to see what you were going to do. Look at your life. Sands of the hourglass. These are the days of your life. <laughs> your life is a soap opera. Why I got to watch one on TV? <laughs> Where we at, Brother Joy? Uh, we just finished 16. Okay, let's go to 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. We almost out here, brother. Y'all eating good? Yes. Praise the Lord. I said, yeah, they eating good. Then nobody walked to the back no more. Y'all left that food alone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. First Peter 4. We're going to read one verse. Verse 12. First Peter 4 and verse 12. And when you get there, my brother, keep feeding. Beloved, think it's not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Right. Don't think it's strange. Stuff going on like, what's going on? What's happening? Don't think it's strange. Go ahead, brother. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Why is this happening to me? Go ahead. Oh, that was the end of 12. That was the end of yeah. that. Keep reading. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. Uh huh. You are partakers of what? Christ's suffering. You mean to tell me God going to put me through a little suffering just to see if I'm going to keep my faith? Praise God, then. You fit the bill. You going through the same thing your God went through. So don't think it's strange when God got to see where your head at. <laughs> he gonna do that. Nobody gonna test you better than your God, brothers and sisters. Nobody. Let's go to Psalm 139. Yeah, finish that last part. That when his glory shall be revealed, yes, he may be glad also with exceeding joy. Yes. Thank you, brother. Can't leave that out. Because again, we are in a position right now where we can't say what we gonna be. But there's people in here that have. Which means we got some serious work to do. A lot of us remember going to school. And you remember when you went to school and you studied for the test? How you came in school that day? <laughs> <laughs> I studied, Joy. Did you study? Oh, you in trouble, bro. Hey, I probably might give you the answer. If you have it, you so like, I can't wait for the teacher. I'm done. Did you study? You never worried about passing when you study. You only worried about failing when you don't. <laughs> Those who have ear, let them hear. Amen. If you study this, what you worried about? If you keeping this, why are you worried? You supposed to know. Man, I'm going to the kingdom, bro. I didn't pass every test the Lord put in front of me. We act like these things is impossible in this generation, and they ain't. Yes, we've all sinned and come short of glory, but pick yourself up and walk right. Walk right. It's a scripture I always point out in, in, in Genesis about Enoch. It says, after the days of Methuselah, he walked with God. I don't know what he did before that. Because it says, after Methuselah, he walked with God. And if the books say all have sinned, then that means Enoch has messed up before. 
<laughs> but when he had Methuselah, he walked with God and he stayed there, which means it's possible. Those who have it here, let them hear. Psalm 139, brothers and sisters, we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Psalm 139 and verse 23. How many of us are going to ask the Lord what we're about to read right here? What did it read, bro? Search me, O oh God. Yes, sir. And know my heart. Yes, sir. Try me and know my thoughts. Test me, God. <laughs> some of us be scared to do that. And we know he's going to find some skeletons in it. Bones going to fall out everywhere. <laughs> Hold on, Jesus. Let me clean up first. Let me, I, I know what's wrong. I know what's wrong. I got it. <laughs> Can we do? <laughs> Every man know their faults. Know what's playing in your heart. But we need to get to this, brothers and sisters. Search me, God. Try me. What David say, remove my secret faults. There might be something I can overlook. You better put it in my face. Go ahead, brother. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And see if there's anything in me. We need to ask for this. We are striving for perfection. I need the maker to test me. Am I ready, Father, to go after? All right. Let me work on it. Am I ready, Father? Nope. All right. Am I ready, Father? Because we don't want to stand before him and he say, I never knew you. And you thought you gave your all. <laughs> That's a hard pill to swallow. That's the scariest verse in the book for me. Oh, Lord, I did that. I taught at IOG, Bob. I never knew you. It's me. I never knew you. Man, that would, you talk about heart in your toes. <laughs> that would hurt. So I better ask this now. Try me, God. What's wrong? Let me fix it now before you put me on blast later. Let's go to Mark, the 14th chapter. This that last part. Go ahead, finish it, brother. And lead me in the way everlasting. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Because how else are we going to get there, brothers and sisters? We already know anything with sin and transgression on it ain't going to enter into the kingdom. So I better dot every I and cross every T when it comes to walking right. Mark, chapter 14. Mark 14, we're going to pick it up at verse 29. Mark 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse 29. Again, we have a proven God. And like we said but earlier, Brother Joy, lip service don't work. <laughs> I wish it did, but I'm flesh. <laughs> don't matter. <laughs> but it don't work. Mark 14, and pick it up in verse 29. Look at another example of the Lord proving to us. What does it read, my brother? But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Uh-huh. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even this night, before the cock before the cock crow twice. Thou shalt deny me thrice. Uh-huh. So we all, hey, even we do this sometimes. We stick our chest out for the Lord. Lord, I'm with you. Ten toes with you, Lord. Ain't nothing going to cheer me from serving you. This was Peter. Oh, Lord, I will never deny you. It was all, man, before the cock crow, you're going to deny me. Check out what Peter say. Keep reading, bro. But he spake the more vehemently. You know, he got to, oh, Lord, no. <laughs> That's what Peter did. He's he he like I'm bold with you. Go ahead. If I should die with thee, uh -huh. I will not deny thee in any wise. I, if they got to kill me with you, I still ain't gonna deny you. Again, it's all lip service, baby. <laughs> Cause we do this. I'm the holiest of the holy. Hebrew, Hebrew. <laughs> Go ahead. Likewise, also said they all. Uh huh. And they came to a place which was named Guess Guessum. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. Uh huh. He said, Sit here for a little while. Skip down to verse 67 and what to read. And keep in mind, Peter said, No, I, ain't, I, I will never deny you. <laughs> if I got to die with you, I got to die with you. Watch how a little pressure hit, hit him. <laughs> 67, what did it read, brother? And when she saw Peter warming himself. Pick it up at verse 65. I'm sorry, 66. Sorry. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, 
there comes one of the maids of the high priest. Uh huh. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Uh huh. So one, hey, so one of these maids saw him. You with you with Jesus. Now go ahead. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou say. What you talking about? Who? You know how people hit you with that. Now keep in mind he just was with the Lord now. I don't care what happened. I never deny you. The minute they snatched Jesus up, Jesus. Who? <laughs> Go ahead, brother. And he went out into the porch and the cock crew. Uh-huh. So the cock crew that time. Keep reading. And a maid saw him again. Uh-huh. And he began to say to them that stood by. This is one of them. Then another man. He one of them. Go ahead. And he denied it again. He denied it again. And Lord proving it to him. <laughs> Go ahead. And a little after, they stood by and said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thou speech agree with thereto. Oh, uh, they said, Yeah, you what you even sound like one of them. <laughs> no, you one of them. But look at Peter now. The same one that was uh, had his chest out vehemently. Look how he's talking now. What is read, brother? But he began to curse and to swear. <laughs> I know not this man of whom you speak. Hey, he got mad now. He throw a curse words out and everything. Look, now I told you I don't know no Jesus. <laughs> but he lied because he's scared. Pressure got put on him now. He denied his God because he got pressure on him. But God told him he was going to do that. He told him. Go ahead, bro. And the second time, the cock crew. Uh-huh. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto hey, him. He, he called it, right? He told me. And I have my chest out like it ain't no way I'm going to do that for you. But it, 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 it. Go ahead. Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Mm -hmm. And when he thought thereon, he wept. He wept. But the Lord proved it to him, brothers and sisters. And the minute he got rocked in life, I don't know, Jesus who? Jesus who? Let's learn from this, brothers and sisters, because the Lord said, if you deny me before men, I'm going to deny you before Father. So just like we be going, Jesus, who, he going to go, brother, so-and-so, who? Sister, so-and-so, who? I never, who you talking about? I don't know you. <laughs> That's scary. <Yes. laughs> Let's go to Job 23, brothers and sisters. We are almost out of here. Job 23, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Job 23, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. To understand who you're dealing with, brothers and sisters, because anytime he feel like testing you, he can do it. <laughs> and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Job 23 and verse 9. Job 23 and verse 9. Go ahead, my brother. On the left hand, where he doeth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. Yes, sir. But he knoweth the way that I take. Uh-huh. When he have tried me, I shall come forth as go. Uh-huh. Job knew this about himself. He said, I can't see the Lord. I don't know if he's coming from the left or from the right. But when he tried me, I'm going to pass. He knew this. Because see, the thing is, brothers and sisters, if you walking with the Lord, you know. And if you need improvement, you know. We know. We know what we got to do. We just make a choice to stay in this sluggard mode sometime. And I'm just talking to me. But we know what we got to do. I want to be able to say these comments right here. Lord, whenever you hit it with me, I'm going to be ready for you. And I'm going to pass. Go ahead, brother. My foot have held his steps. Uh-huh. His way have I kept and not declined. Yes, sir. He said, his way have I kept and not declined. These are people, Job is speaking as a servant is keeping the law and knowing this. And knowing because of this, he ain't going to fail his test. See, when you study, that's why I said you ain't worried about the test. God had already promised you stuff for passing. So Pass. I don't care how bad it looks now. He has already promised you. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Stay righteous. You might not have no food in the refrigerator, but I ain't got to ask nobody for no food either. 
because he gonna provide it. I just got to wait. If I'm right, stay right, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, brother. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Uh-huh, he doing a wicked check right now. I ain't seeing with my mouth. I ain't broke no laws. I ain't did this. He doing a wicked check. Go ahead. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Hey, I didn't put his word above anything else. Why? Because man don't live by word, by food alone. But every word was see, he's showing God his faith. So he know he gonna pass his test. If you ain't got no food in my refrigerator, oh well, I'm gonna eat your words and still be straight. We gotta get there, brother. So let's go ahead, brother Joy. But he is in one mind. And who can turn him? He is in one mind. Who can turn the Lord? If the Lord get ready to do something to you, who can talk him out of it? Nobody. Hold on, Lord, I ain't ready for that. Don't, don't put that on me yet. Don't even send that in the mail. You can't do that. It's coming. We finished that, bro? Uh, we have to end up. Go ahead. And what his soul desireth, even that he do it. Even that he do it. So if he want to test you, brother, sister, what do you think is going to happen? You finna get tested. Let's go to Psalm 17. And we got two more. I know we scared now, but we might get tested any moment. <laughs> we walk around like this now. Yeah. <laughs> Did it come? Psalm 17, we're gonna read one verse, verse three. Psalm 17 and one verse, verse three. Cause we got to get here. David finna make it plain in this one. Seventeen and three. What does it read, my brother? That has proved my heart. Prove my what? My heart. Cause he told you I try to reign to the heart. That's just your mind. Go ahead. Thou has visited me in the night. Uh huh. Thou has tried me. Go sir. And shall find nothing. And shall find nothing. Can we say this? Search me, Lord. <laughs> you ain't gonna find nothing. We were like, hold on, Jesus. Let me put my hands in my pocket. Don't check my pockets. <laughs> we can't be that, brothers and sisters. We got to be, when you come to me, Lord, you ain't going to find nothing but a faithful servant. Blessed is the servant, and when his master comes, you find him doing. Not, not doing. Go ahead, brother. I am purpose that my mouth should not transgress. Uh huh. Hey, I know my mouth ain't even messed up. Who can say that? <laughs> We were gonna let feel like we bittersweet well sometimes, y'all. <laughs> we sweet, then we that sour patch kid, we'll cut up. But we can't be. Can't be. Exodus chapter 20. Just so we know something about the law. Because I don't want people to think I can recite the law with my eyes closed. It ain't about you reciting nothing. <laughs> about you walking them. <laughs> People think they do it so I can say the law. My eyes closed. <laughs> can you walk in it with your eyes closed? <laughs> but I want to read one verse. Exodus 20 and verse 20. What does it read, my brother? And Moses said unto the people, Fear not. For God has come to prove you. God has come to do what? Prove you. To prove you. Go ahead. So even with the law, Israel should have knew then. The Lord's going to test you on every last one of these to see what you're going to do. Hey, we, we weren't supposed to gather no man on the Sabbath day. We gathered man on the Sabbath day. We weren't supposed to mingle with nations. All this is in the law. And he put us in situations to see if we were going to keep it. Our forefathers should have paid attention. This is a hands-on test. This ain't one where you just check the box and say yes and you pass. You're going to have to be tested with this one. Go ahead, brother. And that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. Uh-huh. So keep your mind on the test because you never know when that pop quiz is coming. Be afraid of that. If, that, if this lesson has made you afraid because you don't know when it's coming, praise the Lord. Because now you're prepared for it. The Lord going to hit me with something to see if I'm real or not. 
I better get in my book. If it put that on you, my mission is done today. <laughs> I hope it scared some of you. Last place, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And this scared me, brothers and sisters. I'm dealing with a teacher that don't clock out. <laughs> <laughs> And can spring a pop quiz on me at any moment. <laughs> Ain't no eight to three with this teacher. <laughs> it's any time at any moment. Second Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. Second Corinthians chapter two. I might have said that wrong. Second Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. When you get there, my brother, go right ahead. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you. Yes, sir. Whether ye be obedient in all things. Uh huh. Do y'all know that at the end, of, when it gets to judgment day, books are going to be open? And the books say every man going to be judged what? According to his works. So your life is being recorded. If you are a servant of God, there's going to be things written in your book that are proof to validate that. Not words. Proof. When I put you in this situation, you did this. When I put you in this, you did that. When I put you in this, you failed that. When I put you in this, you did this. Keep that in mind, brothers and sisters, because that's how we're going to be, if you're going to make it to the, if you don't make the first resurrection, for sure, that's going to be how it's going to be for you. God going to see what you did with his word and if you kept it or not. Not what you said, what you did. Skip down to verse 11. What does it read? Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That's right, brothers and sisters. So that's the lesson the Lord will prove you. I hope you understand what we're bringing you today in Jesus' name.